What's up, Matt? Hey. Got there. <laughs> Dude! Yeah! Damn it, my girl! Oh, snap! Dude! Is that what I think it is? We're gonna have to let you go. Oh, hey! Didn't see you there. Luckily, I realized you're not a threat and I didn't shoot you with my new Terran Tactical. Look at this thing. This thing is called the Sand Viper. So it's a 2011 chambered in nine millimeter, and it is the best looking thing ever. So I have two other Terran guns. Um, I have a Glock 17L Combat Master, and then I also have an AR that's all tricked out by Terran. So this is the brand new one, the Terran Tactical Sand Viper. It has a ported barrel. It's actually got a big port in the top, and it's got two little ports over to the side here. It's got slide lightning cuts to make it to where it goes back nice and fast. It's got a Trichicon red dot on top, skeletonized trigger, skeletonized hammer. It's got a nice big beaver tail. It's got really grippy grips on there. Super cool. It's got a uh, rail for a light if you want. That angle's neat too. I think that's kind of where it gets a Sand Viper name. We are going to shoot it today. Um, I'm very excited. I love high quality 2011s. They just run so smooth. They shoot so nice. And this is like top tier 2011 right here. This is cool, and a lot of people buy guns like this um, to be safe queens. Safe queens are guns that you take out to the range, you put down a nice pad, and you set the gun on there, and you shoot it, and then you clean it and oil it, and then you shoot another mag, and then you clean it and oil it, and you take really good care of it. And if it got a scratch, it would kill you. You would actually just die because you love it so much. That's how a lot of people treat guns that are in this class the super fancy high-end 2011 class. But you came to Demolition Ranch, and we're gonna put it through a torture test today. I'm just kidding, we're not. Uh, we are though, I'm gonna actually take it to a class with my buddy Kilo Charlie Tactics. We're going to run this thing in an actual pistol class. We're gonna get it a little dirty, we're gonna probably get some scratches on it, and we're gonna see how I can run it under a little bit of pressure. And we've never done this before. We're gonna go out, do a class, let you guys come with me. Uh, if you guys like it, let me know. We might do it a little more often, but I've never done anything like this, and I thought it'd be cool to bring you guys along. What is that? You hear that? Sounds like thunder. Oh, yeah. We better get out of here. Sounds like a storm is coming. <laughs>
We are out here at a Kilo Charlie Tactics. Is that right? Yes, sir. I nail it with Tom. Tell me about what you do. In a nutshell, I uh, retired military and just kind of what I was doing was doing a lot of pre-deployment training for military units. Everything that I did and learned in the military, you know, just kind of trying to pass, keep passing that on. And then uh, that became a lot of work in addition to my actual job. So I've necked it down to what we're doing today, basically. Pistol, yeah. rifle, and night vision training. Yeah, and he does like night vision stuff, uh, like classes where you're only wearing night vision. You do helicopter stuff. like Yeah, like, so I've taken it down to just shooting, basically. Gotcha. Yeah, all the way from like basics, like th this is like what, an intermediate class? Yes, sir. And then he goes up to like the more high level stuff too. So this is actually the first class I've ever taken with him. Um, I met him. I don't know, almost a year ago probably. Yeah, about at that gun event that you guys were doing. Yep, yeah, I met him at Apache. So yeah, I, just, I reached out and I was like, hey, I want to take a class with my, my new Gucci pistol over here. Yeah, it's uh, definitely a nice little pistol. You ever shot one of these? I have not. I need to get you to shoot it for the end of the day. I uh, would definitely love to do you're it. A, you're a you Glock man, looks like? I am. I, yeah. I try them too. I love Glocks. I, I like all. I like all. Yep. I need a couple of everything. Yep. Um, the way I train is this is what I use overseas. Yep. So I still train with it yeah, here. Makes sense. The exact same setup that I got here is what I got overseas. So Sweet. it's just like it's like I haven't even left. So. So um, I'm basically a pro already. Obviously, you guys know. <laughs> no. So he's just gonna. Um, he's basically here to kind of help tighten every everybody up and make sure that you know what we're doing is is enforcing good habits and. I don't know. I'm I, I'm uh, looking forward to what we got planned for the rest of the day. It's gonna be a good day. Heck yeah. We're just working on trigger reset. Um, kind of feeling that wall coming off it fast. He was basically saying a lot of people when they're they get the adrenaline, they like hold the trigger down too long until you're ready to shoot again then you pop it off and go back and that just adds another step so he wants you to fire and instantly come off that trigger but be able to get back on that really quick so just working on little tiny things that you never really think of um, until you come out here and someone's like hey if you do this and this and this it'll tighten everything up speed of tighten up these mags are tight i need to leave these things loaded for a while um, also this is a nice gun i even feel bad dropping the mags in the dirt but i'm doing it i'm I, I gotta get it dirty today. That's. I just want to break this thing in and also get over the. It's super nice. I might get some scratches. I just. We gotta scratch it up today. Not on purpose. We're gonna drag it behind the truck. What you're focusing on is that transition. So you you pull that trigger and you want to end up second sight picture on the next one ready to go. Okay. On you. It was just a, a steady coming across. So you're transitioning with using your recoil to transition yeah. basically. Yeah. That was good. Fairly quick, fairly smooth. So cool. Good. Thanks. Right on. So it's just just forcing you to transition. Yeah, a little bit. Okay. So only the middle two and then that one all the way on the hill. Okay. It's three thousand yards, that's why I missed it. So I've never like really practiced with a red dot. So this thing doesn't have any iron, so it's got just a red dot. And I've said actually in the last couple of videos that I've shot a red dot is I want to get good at it. It's something like I've done competitions with iron sights um, and my whole life I grew up practicing pistol with iron sights and I'm pretty good at it. But red dot is something new to me. So, and everybody says, people who are good at red dot say that it's, it's better. And so I kind of want to start getting good at it, see if I get better with a red dot. And like I was telling you, going up and down is way easier than left and right. Like it just, yeah. it, the pistol wants to do the work for you. Yep. Nice. I think you got this one. Yay. I have that at home. I practice <laughs> yeah. on that. I have this one. <laughs> yeah, there you go. That's fun. Moving back and forth. I never even tried that. From the holster. Shooter's ready. Threat. That's awesome. What happened? Yeah, my Mac fell out. I was like, oh. Uh. Threat.
Ah, oh, what? Ah, you got it. Right on. <laughs> That's cool. I was just telling him, I was taught by competition shooters how to clear a Texas star. So you, you hit up top so it doesn't start spinning as fast and you hit it in a certain way. He was saying, like, we're trying to get good. He's trying to get good and get us good at shooting, like, you know, learning on the fly, like not trying to clear the plate really fast, but actually learn how to transition targets really fast. So like, yeah, make it, make it spin yeah. and then deal with the situation. Try, yeah, make, make it good. harder basically so you yeah. get better. I want to get good at finding the dot. Like I'm used to with like Glocks and like pistols that I use a bunch, knowing where my sights are. I'm not used to finding the red dot like fast. I'd like to get good at that. Really. Pull it up and it's there. Already that feels faster. Like I feel like I, I'm getting the grip angle, figuring out where that dot's gonna be. I'm gonna try to pop up, shoot one, and then transition to a second one far away. Just two at a time. That was not good. I missed the dot that time. Yeah, when you're doing this drill. I wanna get good at using a red dot. I'm I'm not I've always shot iron sights. Yes. And so this is the first time that I've really like thought about training with a red dot. So just then I was trying to come up and like find the dot fast and then put it down and come find the dot fast. So yep. I would just like to be confident with when I present pistol, my dot is already there. Okay, let, let me just look at your, your draw for okay. a couple times. Okay. So the first thing I'll say is your draw trick, I'm gonna step on this side so I'm not pointing at anybody. What'll help you out is you're coming like this. Okay. If you come more like, I, I always pin this hand and I'll come like it's like so robotic you, and I'm kind of getting it I'm just basically hinging up and then push meeting this hand and then punching out from here okay but what that does is it puts even your irons and your red dot it puts it in line with your eye a lot quicker okay versus you're coming up and you're you're trying to stop with the red dot on the target sense. but you don't know where that red dot is yet okay. try that a couple times and just see how it feels like what you think yeah yeah because you have more time to to balance acquire that, that out. Sight. There you go. Okay. So you just go. the repetition. That looks good. You scoop that one a little more. What? You scoop that one. Oh, okay. You came. So I need to come more. Okay. Got it. There you go. Nice. That feels good. A lot better. <laughs> feels right? good. Yeah. All right. What's interesting, if you guys ever go and just train at a range all by yourself, just go shoot. Just putting a timer on you, which we were like all kind of joking about who's faster. And so I was like, well, I got to go fast. Just having a time limit adds enough stress to totally screw you up. So I've never been in a firefight. Obviously, I'm a stupid YouTuber. But I can imagine if I ever was in a firefight, that's probably more stress than a timer. So my shooting would probably not be very good. So we're doing drills now. Um, we're actually turning around and running back towards people, which in competition, that's a big no-no. So I'm having to like retrain myself. Like it's okay, I'll keep the pistol down and safe, um, but it's still hard. And then also running and coming up with a red dot is very foreign to me. I don't think I've ever done it. So like I would run up and couldn't find the dot, which obviously this just takes practice. But that's why we're here. As you're hitting these cones, we know your stance is gonna be off. We're giving up on our stance because we want to be faster but you're gonna, gonna concentrate a little more on your grip and your trigger manipulation. Missing. <laughs> 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 when I'm just standing there pulling it up, 
I can keep in the same spot. When I'm running, it takes me a second to figure out where that red dot is, which, I don't know, obviously practice. Next round you go as you're running, yeah. and you start here and push it back out. Okay. Instead get of trying to start out here. Get it up a little sooner. Get it back. Now, if you're coming in and, and turning, right. maybe having it here and then push okay. forward. And then when you're doing the straight on drills like we're going to do over there, then you can you can kind of, as you're taking that last step, you're stepping into it a little bit. And we'll get to that. Cool. That one, they wanted us to not quit running during it. We got to run far on this one. It's like 40 yards. You ready? Yeah. It's actually 135. Yeah, it's it's 1,000 yards. On you. <laughs> he wants us to sprint when you get in between the cones. Slowly walk down, try to control it. Easier said than done. One rule, don't suck. Well, gotta go home. <laughs> nice. Hey, rule number one, you nailed it. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> What we were talking about off camera is I've done some three gun matches where you will get disqualified if you break the 180 rule, which means if you come and bring that pistol 180 on either, either side, you get disqualified out of the entire match, like you're done. And so it's hard for me to go bam, bam, turn around this way and run this way because that never is allowed yeah. to happen in all the actual training I've had because I haven't had tactical training. I've had some competition training yeah. and things like that, but it makes sense that why should that matter? Like in, in a competition, they make it as safe as possible. Yes. For training, you want to be as deadly as possible. And that's exactly what it's for is yep. safe as possible on that range, which makes total sense for that range. Yep. But the mall situation we we're talking about, that's all bets are off at that yep. point, but you still need to be safe with that weapon because you don't want to point at and shoot potentially someone that doesn't need to be. Right. Like just learning that it is okay to do this. You know, my pistol's in a safe direction. Like it's, it goes a long way. Yeah, that's the part I got to unlearn. He, we were calling those uh, training scars. Training scars. Yeah, stuff that I got to know is like not the actual way you would do it if something bad went down. Hi. Even walking's hard to keep it steady and in line. One thing that people mess up on a regular basis, so here's this wall and they're like, okay, I'm going to shoot right there. You know, and they're like, I'm just barely yeah, going to come up. Fire into my it. sights are on the target, but my barrel is pointing here. So a lot of these barricades, you'll see like half mm -hmm. start bullet holes all over the place and along the side right here. So just something to be aware of. Okay. Um, Probably do that. I'll just see it. Damn. That's hard uh, trying to find that dot like that too, because obviously yeah. I've never done a uh, uh, red dot on the ground, but that's hard to find that dot when I'm sideways. I like this gun. We have had zero malfunctions with the gun today. There's uh, other people in the class with Glocks, with SIGs. They've had malfunctions. This thing, so far, I haven't had any, and I put over 500 rounds in it today, which is pretty cool. This thing, it's freaking tight and it looks so good. He killed it with the looks, but also it runs, freaking runs, freaking shoots. I'm a big fan of the Sand Viper. We got a scratch. I don't know if y'all can see it right there on the Sand Viper. We're scuffed up on the edge of the trigger guard here a little bit. 
We got a scratch up there on the guide rod, looks like. Yeah, we got a little, few little nicks in the flared magwell there. Got some, that's, that's holster wear. So we were in and out of holster all day today, which a lot of people, they have a safe queen. You'll never see them put it in a holster because it, it'll wear the finish. It'll scuff it up with the plastic, but we got this thing dirty today. Sweaty, nasty. This is a compensated gun. You can see all the carbon in there blasting all day. Got her dirty and she's still running like a champ. We have not cleaned this thing one time today. No jams. We're done. Hey, if you guys want to get you an awesome backpack, we got them right here. They come with two demolition patches. Uh, they're good for range days. They're good for school. They're good for trips, camping, whatever you need to do. And uh, if you guys want to check out Kilo Charlie Tactics over here, Instagram's the best place? Yes, sir. I will link in the description below. Um, be brutally honest with me. How, how was it? Was I okay? Oh, man. Uh, I had a list of things that I was going to give you just to kind of improve on to help you out a little bit, but... Uh, too it's long. too much typing and it, it like crashed my phone. So, but not a serious note, man. You uh, you're actually you're actually a pretty good shot. It was kind of fun today. Thanks. Watching, yeah. Watching you rip around the. It ring. was so really fun. It was a good time. I, I had a great time. Thank you for having me. Uh, and so this is kind of something totally different that we've never really done before. Is like show you guys me taking like a training class. If you guys like this kind of video, let me know. He also does helicopter classes. He does yeah. carbine classes and stuff like that. So we may have to come back out here uh, and do one of those if you guys like it. So let me know in the comments below if you want to see that kind of stuff. Go check him out and appreciate you guys. Thanks so much for watching this episode of Nimbus Ranch. I love you, and I'll see you next time. Yeah, I'm good. <laughs> it's quite simple. There's only one rule in the demolition. You don't tell Mayor.